Today on Upfront, the fate of tax reform. It sails through the House, but what are its chances in the Senate? I'll ask Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson who opposes the current bill. Then a labor leader enters the race for governor. Today, Firefighters Union President Malin Mitchell on why he thinks he can unseat Governor Walker. And how Milwaukee County's executive helped fuel a transgender lawmaker's victory in Virginia. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. We begin today with what could be the biggest changes to the nation's tax system in three decades. The $1.5 trillion Republican tax bill cleared the House last week, but its fate in the Senate is still uncertain. Both the House and Senate plans would cut the corporate tax rate from 35 percent to 20 percent, but the Senate plan has some key differences. And Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson last week became the first Republican senator to say at this point he could not support it. Senator Johnson joins us today on Upfront. Senator, it's good to have you back on the program. Well, Mike, great to be back. So have you changed your mind? Are you still opposed to what's being talked about by the Senate? Oh, in its current form, yeah. Uh, and, and here's the problem. It's imperative that we make American businesses competitive globally. We're not. We're at 35 percent or over 40 percent with pass-throughs when the rest of the world is under, you know, somewhere between 20 and 25 percent. You just can't operate that way, so you have to make American business competitive. But when you're doing that, you also have to maintain the competitive balance and position of U.S. businesses relative to each other as well. And the, the, whoever wrote the framework for Republican tax reform recognized that. That's why they lowered the rates 20% for the corporate tax, but they said we're going to have a pass-through rate of 25% so we don't leave those pass-through entities, you know, the bedrocks of their communities, behind. Define pass-through for sure. people who are not as familiar those, with the business world. Th those are more than 90% of American businesses, and the income of the business passes through to the owners. And, and you, then they pay taxes. And you report, report an individual, right. it's taxed at progressive mm -hmm. individual rates. I think has been very healthy for the economy because it frees up capital. You don't have the hoarding uh, and accumulation of, of dollars inside the, the business. You can reallocate that capital in more efficient, competitively, uh, competitive ways. So you think big corporations in this current proposal in the Senate are being treated better than the oh, yeah, businesses they, you yeah, just they, described? They, they get a, a large majority of the, the, the tax benefits on, on the business side, even though they represent less than half of taxable income. It's those owner-operated businesses that generations sometimes have put their, their heart and soul into building them. They're only concerned about those businesses. They're concerned about the, the people that work for them. You know, see, I, I've got no problem with big C-Corps, but it's a different model. You have hired gun managers. They're short-term thinkers. They, they're, they're worried about their, their quarterly performance and you know, what, what the stock price is going to be five years in the future. They, they go buy these owner-operated businesses. They sometimes strip them out or just take the manufacturing and put it in some other plant in another state that has capacity. So we want to encourage entrepreneurs to start businesses and we want that free flow of capital uh, around the economy. Do you think there'll be uh, uh, sufficient changes made to get you to a yes vote on this tax no, reform? Listen, I'm very encouraged. You know, when I came out mm -hmm. publicly, and by the way, I didn't draw attention to myself, I wanted to draw attention to this issue and I have. The president called me, Speaker Ryan called me, I got a call from Mnuchin Cohn, I met with both of those individuals with their staff on the, on the drive down here. I had a good talk with the Senate Finance and, and Majority Leader staff. We're defining the problem, we're getting the information we need so we can actually fix this problem. So no, I'm, I'm pretty encouraged with the reaction. I gotta, I gotta ask you about what uh, Congressman Sensenbrenner said uh, about you because you said you're not trying to draw attention to yourself and he said on the, on the Mark Belling radio show the other day that Senator Johnson was strutting around like a peacock in his opposition to the tax reform well, bill. First of all, I don't think I've seen Jim in about five weeks and anybody who's watching me walk around the Capitol knows I speed walk, you know, if not run. Not, not strutting? I, I don't strut, no. <laughs> no, listen, th this, this is an incredibly important issue, and, and proof of it is I've been getting texts, emails, phone calls from around the country, people that, as I'm on campaign, I've, I've given my phone number, I've never, never heard from them, I am now. And maybe the, the best proof is, is I'll be on Larry Kudlow's radio show, he's the architect of President Trump's tax plan. I thought he was going to call me up to take me out the woodshed. He said, Senator Johnson, thank you for catching this. This is incredibly important. Come on my radio show. You've got to explain what, why this is such a problem. There is a lot of urgency being attached to this. The Republicans feel they need to pass this. They need to get it done before Christmas. Is this a good piece of legislation based on what you've seen? Is it good tax reform legislation? It's not my idea of a perfect piece of legislation. I would want 
all the components targeted toward economic growth. But let's face it, people have different opinions on this. You deliver a middle class tax cut, you know I've been talking about. I never promised to cut anybody's taxes. We're $20 trillion in debt. If, if we're going to deficit spend, I'd rather spend it in infrastructure. Uh, to the extent we have to cut taxes to make businesses competitive, you just have to do that. But again, from, from my standpoint, uh, it's not the tax plan I would, I would uh, enact. But as and long as you it, would enact it no, either. No, no. Yeah. I, I'd take a little bit more time. I'd lay it out there for greater scrutiny. Uh, but again, in the end, I'm a business guy, manufacturer, continuous improvement. Uh, I do believe in total, if we can fix this pass through, uh, it's, it's a tax package I can, I can support. Let me have you address a couple of the concerns that have been raised. Uh, you've seen these. Uh, there was a study that came out Thursday from the Joint Committee on Taxation. This is Congress's official nonpartisan uh, analysts. It's, a, it's conclusion, and according to the Washington Post, was that the tax bill Senate Republicans are championing would give large tax cuts to millionaires while raising taxes on American families earning 10000 to 75000 over the next decade. Well, that, that, that bottom part is all about the repeal of the individual mandate mandate. Uh, and let's face it, most people that are paying the penalty because they can't afford Obamacare make $50,000 or less. And so they're the ones that are really being harmed by Obamacare. And the way CBO scores the reduction of that mandate is it's uh, less spending on subsidies. And so they actually call that a tax increase. It just isn't. It's, it's just the wacky scoring of CBO so you think, on, on both accounts. You think that's not, not reflective no, it's, of it's, the reality? It's, it's simply not accurate, no. Uh, what about the concern that you've heard some, some Wisconsin Democrats who say, you know, uh, to get rid of all local and state deductions, that's going to have an impact on some taxpayers in this state. There could be tens of thousands of people who end up paying more because of that legislation. Do you agree with eliminating all the state and local tax deductions? Uh, I do, but again, my, my approach would have been somewhat differently. Different. I, what I would have done is I would have basically said, if you like your tax plan, you can keep it. You know, keep all your special deductions, okay. or you can choose this elegantly simple tax system based on an effective rate schedule. Again, that's, that concept wasn't adopted, so the type of tax reform this is, you're going to have winners and losers. Now, when you, you listen to the folks that have written this thing, most people are going to be winners, but if you are in a high-tax state like New York, like California, we're kind of on the bubble. We're kind of right in between, a little bit more high-tax. So, you know, but there will be people that uh, their income taxes will be increased. I don't like that. The, the one promise I made is I'm not going to increase your taxes. So that is certainly one of the things that weighs on my mind is I have to take a look at an overall bill uh, again, nothing's going to be yeah. perfect, and I'm not going to pose my idea perfect to have that be the enemy of the good, but uh, that's one of the problems of this tax bill. Do you think this is going to get done? I, I think it is. I, I think do. just the political imperative, there's, there's a level of des desperation on the part of Republicans. You know, we've got to get this thing done. We, we failed on Obamacare, although we're not done with that. Graham Cassidy, Heller, Graham Cassidy, Heller Johnson, I think, has a real chance. You do. Yeah. It block grants the money to the states, right. let 50 states, their governors, their legislators, take that money and, and, and use it more effectively and efficiently uh, in their own states for their own citizens. Senator Ron Johnson, the Republican from Oshkosh, good to have you back on the program today. Have a great day. Thanks very much. And my interview with Senator Johnson continues now on our website, where I'm asking him about the sexual misconduct allegations against Minnesota Senator Al Franken and Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore. Senator Johnson predicts Judge Moore won't serve in the U.S. Senate. You'll find that on the Upfront section of WISN.com. Coming up later on up front, how the Milwaukee County Executive helped elect the nation's first openly transgender state lawmaker. But first, a firefighter runs for governor. I'll be talking with Malin Mitchell about his campaign and his place in the growing Democratic field. That's next on Upfront. Upfront with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company and the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association.